Um, as I said, I'm Chris Martin. I work for the Cleared Powers Archaeological Trust. I'm going to rattle very, very fast through the development of our ancient monuments uh, record system, the various dependencies of it, and have a little bit of a discussion about big data. Um, as you're probably now sick of hearing, there are four Welsh archaeological <laughs> trusts, um, each of which is responsible for the historic environment record for that region. Um, I'm going to have to come over here, because otherwise I can't reach the... I'll use the return key, it's easier. We started, uh, as with most people, with a paper record in the 1970s, working on the system developed by Don Benson. Um, we then computerized in the 1980s, uh, using well, approximately 10 or more versions of software, again, basically starting with the system that was devised by Don while he was working at the W Archaeological Trust. Um, but by the early 2000s, we were all working on a relatively stable system. But it was quite outdated, it was quite antiquated. We thought that we probably needed to move to something better as a unit, so we got together and we discussed uh, producing um, a Welsh uh, web database for the four regional records. Uh, we discussed this with various people. We engaged the Oxford Arch Digital to produce what was termed the TOAD HMS, which stands for the Oxford Arch Digital Heritage Management System, if you wondered. Um, they took all the data away, they started to build it, they went very quiet, and then they went bust. Um, basically, Toad was dead. Uh, as you can imagine, period of discussion followed this. We touted the data around various people, what we could recover. Um, we talked to uh, freelance developer Steve Smith, who um, suggested a way forward. Uh, he suggested that we construct a MySQL database running on a single web server, handled through Apache, XAMPP, PHP, my admin, uh, with Java, PHP, written front-end, uh, an integrated GIS, which would work through more or less any internet browser. Um, it would be largely user-configurable and fully MIDAS compliant. So uh, basically, the uh, Hero system was born. Um, and as you can see, it's a sort of basic system. We have a core and event records uh, attached to a number of child databases, another freestanding data. Uh, you can also link uh, what I might term a number of occasional tables to the database uh, so that you can work in a particular project at a particular time so you're not fixed with uh, the single set of uh, databases. And you can recover information from the database uh, using a set of simple filters. The filters are uh, user configurable so you can recover more or less what you like in any order um, and you can adjust the data. So there is a freestanding set of images uh, linked to thumbnails and digital images, set of metadata. You can interrogate this independently, or you can link these to the core event records and interrogate it through the HER. Um, and you can look at the images at your will. I just lovely rural setting I work in. <laughs> uh, there's also a freestanding table of uh, sources and bibliographical information. Again, you can interrogate this independently or you can link this to the core and event data. Um, and also those sources are linked to a library of, effectively of grey literature, a library of other digital resources. So examples such as this contractor's report, grey literature, other websites, other features, anything you get on the web, you can link to the bibliographical data. It handles maps, vector, raster data. Um, in the manner of a fully functional GIS. It does basically what you would expect a GIS to do. Uh, so you can manipulate the maps, you can import, export, change the vector data, change the colors, change the structure of what you're looking at. Um, and it's quite useful for doing things like historic landscape characterization. You know, you can interact with the map directly with the HER uh, and you can import data and edit data in that. It also links to external mapping sources, so any external web mapping that produces an API of any sort, you can code that in, so it will link to Google, Bing, the Ordnance Survey, OpenStreetMap, etc, etc. Um, so you can use that as a base map if you want. It'll even shell in and out of uh, Google Street View, which is actually surprisingly useful for doing DC work. 
um, see whether things that you're talking about are actually still there. <laughs> It will also do um, uh, with the digital terrain modelling. Um, so this is a LIDAR data. In fact, this is an example taken from the South Downs National Park Secrets of the High Woods project. They had, they're working with our database to do this. They had a tranche of LIDAR data flown over woodland and South Downs. They've examined that data. They've used it to draw uh, information into the national mapping programme. And you can do all the normal sorts of things that you can do the digital terrain model, you can change the lighting, you can draw sections through the data, you can spin the data around, uh, look at it upside down if you want to, you can even flood it, although I'm never quite sure why you'd want to, but uh, you can do it. Yes. You can see at what state, what stage things will disappear, I suppose. So. Yes. I'm being slightly flippant. <laughs> it is, yes. I mean, there are there are sites which are genuinely vulnerable. So you know, yeah. and there are a number of reporting functions uh, you can report in most of the usual formats, as, as CSV or XML PDFs, etc. So you can produce PDF reports like that, or you can produce reports for HTML templates. There's quite a lot of them. Ability open to you. And if you're a bit old-fashioned like me, uh, you can run SQLs to link various tables together and you can look at your data in something that resembles a desktop a database browser, which is comforting for the older members of your staff. <laughs> we also felt that there was a need for a public front end. So we produced the Archilio database. Um, basically, this works on a copy of the HER, which is updated every night. It sits on a separate server. Um, and you can interrogate the data against a variety of base maps, again, Google being the OS, um, and you can interrogate the data points, call up the data records. Um, from those data records, anything which is downloadable from the HER is also potentially downloadable from Archilio. So you can download grow literature, you can link to other websites, uh, you can download photographs. In 2012, we teamed up with CMAS, who are the Centre for Excellence in Mobile Applications and Services at the University of South Wales, an organisation which I think changed its name three times while we were dealing with them. Um, and with European <coughs> Regional Development Funding, uh, they agreed to produce um, an Android mobile phone application which would run on the Arquilio data. And this allows you to interrogate uh, the HER. Uh, on your phone or on your tablet. Um, you can interrogate the points again against the map base. It will call up the site description. It will call up a gallery of images. The, the what, where, when of the information. Um, but you can also supply comment. So you can feed back comment into the HR. You can supply information about new sites. And perhaps, I think something which we've probably found <coughs> most useful is of course you can supply photographs as well. And those are an example of some photographs supplied by members of the public. Um, they're quite good considering they're taken on mobile phones, really, which is slightly worrying. Um, but also, it has a use in fieldwork. And thank you, Ray. Uh, this is a photograph of Ray Carr's excavations uh, near Kaidrawin in the Dee Valley. Um, and he was able to use the app to send us photography as he proceeded with his excavation. So it can be used in fieldwork projects as well as by members of the public. We are hoping to produce an HTML5 version of this in the not too distant future. At the moment, it's only an Android app, um, because if it was an HTML5 version, it would be uh, fully available across all platforms. There is already effectively an HTML5 version running with the CBA's First World War project, which also runs on our system. So links to, I suppose, what you might term big data. I'm not quite sure what big data is myself. but um, You can link in and out of the PAS website uh, so that you can manipulate that information. Um, there are links into local authorities. So for example, you can uh, recall conservation area assessment, etc. cetera. Um, there is also a live link to the Seneschal website, which allows you to hey, which allows you to draw down information from their data vocabularies, from the centrally maintained data vocabularies for 
site type uh, example site type to throw us this sort of thing so you can use that for searching or for data entry uh, which is quite you can also use an internal thesaurus as well should the internet not be working and we have within the last couple of weeks agreed a protocol with the ADS to allow uh, the ADS to take event data out of the HER uh, and grey literature that goes with that event data to populate the OASIS database so that the onus will be on the HER to start the process of recording events and then the ADS can copy this data. Um, jo, who's coming on after me, will probably tell you more about this. She might, she might not, I don't know. <laughs> there are links also to uh, things such as Covline, the National Monuments Records for Wales' database, their online database, um, so that you can call up the Covline record uh, and examine that. Um, it's one of those databases which is available through um, the Historic Wells portal, but we're not only taking data from that portal, we're also supplying data to that portal. So we're supplying information to the Wells portal. You could, it's another way of interrogating the data. Uh, you can look at various databases across Wales at once or singly. I have talked to English Heritage, well, I'm sorry, Historic England, um, although I don't know who in this room knows this. Um, about the feasibility of feeding the Welsh HGRs out through the Heritage Gateway. There appears to be no political reason why this shouldn't happen, so watch this space, it's something that may happen at some point. And I put this up, really, you can read it yourselves, I don't need to read it to you. I would perhaps, however, draw your attention to the last two bullet points that one of the purposes of this system is to try to utilize other people's data, other people's big data on the internet. So it's not necessarily to shadow or to copy, but to use what is already out there. And this system does have the capability to link into anything that you can get hold of, basically. Also, it's relatively cheap. So if you want to know more, there is a website, there are software. Go and have a look and see what you think. Thank you.